Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Joseph. Thanks for joining me. Um, tonight we're going to talk about essential oils for stress and other difficult emotions. Um, I am, I have, I am streaming to um, Facebook at this moment and I'm seeing some people joining me. Hi Randy, hi Anna. I've dropped the link for, for the Zoom into the uh, comments section on Facebook. So if you're here live with me and feel like come on on over to Zoom to be part of this um, and be able to chat with me <laughs> more in person, then I welcome you, come join me. It'll be lovely to have a discussion with you. Um, I am recording this. So if you don't wanna be recorded on Zoom, you can still join me on Zoom and we'll just, you just keep your, um, yourself on mute and your video off and you won't be part of the recording. Okay. And I promise that if you join me on Zoom, I'll turn off the recording at the very end of this video and we can have a chance to talk privately if, the, if you need that. Okay. If you'd like that. So hi, Melissa. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, again, I'm Sarah Joseph and I'm going to be sharing some information about essential oils for stress and emotions, other difficult emotions tonight. And I have a little PowerPoint. So let me just find my PowerPoint and see if I can share that in my screen with you. And here we go. Okay. So we thought that this might be a good topic to start with um for for our DIY um, event because the holidays are coming and with COVID um and just in general holidays often bring a lot of stress and some other difficult emotions uh with it so um you know we thought that this might be a good a good video to to start with a good class to start with so that we can use our essential oils for ourselves um, to help ourselves and to um, you know to stay grounded throughout the holidays okay i'm feeling not so grounded right this second <laughs> i don't know about you so i want to invite you to join me um in just a, a quick moment of of mindfulness if you want to grab whatever oil is closest to you it will work perfectly fine so just grab an oil if you have one handy i'm i'm going to grab my balance here and i'm just going to ask you to Put a drop, or if you have a roller, just roll a bit in the palm of your hand, and then just rub your hands together. And then cup your hands over your nose and your mouth, and we're just gonna take a couple of, of nice deep breaths together, okay? And just let those oils really get into your system. And we're just gonna slow ourselves down a bit. And let go of the rest of the today, all of the business, and then getting dinners ready, and maybe getting kids ready for bed or activities, doing dishes, and all the other things that we have to do in order to be able to show up here. So just take one more nice deep breath And just really let go of all of today's stuff so that you can show up really present and grounded for this class. Okay, thank you. I feel better already. I hope you do too. Okay, so again, I'm Sarah Joseph. And if you're just joining us, please pop a comment in the Facebook um, live feed below. Uh, let us know if you're catching the replay or if you're here live and where you're joining us from. Um, I have popped the Zoom link into the Facebook Live comments. So if you feel like jumping on to Zoom with us, please come on over and join us. Um, if not, then I've got my Facebook feed here as well. So you can pop comments into um, the Facebook, Facebook Live um, and we will I will try to pay attention to as much as I possibly can all at once. 
All right. So thanks for joining me. A little bit about myself is I'm the mom of two. I live on the Sunshine Coast of British Columbia, Canada. So lucky to live in this little slice of paradise. I, my background is in social work. I have a master's in social work and I'm a positive discipline trainer. I've been working uh, with families as a family therapist and as a parent educator and as a uh, school consultant uh, for over 10 years. And I'm also the author of a children's book called The Animals in My Brain. I've been using doTERRA essential oils for uh, about, let's think, about eight years now, six, six, eight, I don't know, somewhere around there, <laughs> years. Um, and honestly, I don't know what we did without them. Um, they have become so much a part of my life, my family life, my work life, my uh, counseling practice, my work with parents, um, that I, I honestly, I, I just see them as another tool in my toolbox. And I don't know like what tool was there before that, um, that I feel like there was a serious gap in my, in my toolbox before I had these essential oils. Um, so tonight, what I want to do is, is, is invite you to join me to learn a little bit about um, emotions and how the brain works um, and how maybe we can help ourselves regulate our emotions and have a little bit more emotional well-being and how we can use our essential oils to help us with those things. Okay, so um, tonight I wanted to share with you some of the emotional benefits that essential oils offer us. And they include, you know, everything from calming and soothing and um, really helping us feel grounded um, to invigorating us and uplifting us and energizing us. So they kind of run the full spectrum <laughs> of that emotions can run as well. Uh, so they pair really well with pretty much any emotion that you're feeling or would like to be feeling. So before we really get into what oils do what and how we can use them to um, get some of these emotional benefits, I thought that a good place to start might be with talking about how the brain works. Um, simply because I feel like this is foundational information that really helps us understand the process that our body is going through when we're feeling an emotion. and um, it empowers us to feel like we can we, we, we can have have some control over this okay so as we're talking about how the brain works i'm going to also teach you about tonight about an anchoring technique that is a simple way that you can learn how to change unwanted feelings um, and a resource for feeling better in a, just a few minutes or a few moments it, it works really fast um, and this anchoring te technique is really power for helping you have more confidence, patience, and feel more present and grounded. Um, and we're going to be using our essential oils. So grab, if you don't have one like super handy, if you can like run to the other side of the house and grab your essential oil, now's the time to do it. Okay. So go grab something. It doesn't matter what, just something that you like the smell of is, is going to be helpful. Okay. I'm going to talk about, about a few oils that I find super helpful, but for this anchor tech, anchoring technique, what we need is just something that you find um, a pleasant smell, okay? Okay. So we're gonna start with the brain. And this is a graphic from my website that you can download for free at sarahjoseph.ca. And it is from the children's book that I wrote called The Animals in My Brain. Um, and I have this poster and the book available on my website, and um, it is available in English, Spanish, and French. So all of your bilingual needs. <laughs> okay, so um, let's start with the guard dog. So the guard dog is our amygdala, and our amygdala is the part of our brain that takes in everything that's going on around us. Okay, so it's going to take in all the sights and sounds. And, pay, and it pays attention to our feelings as well. 
Um, and the, the guard dog responds to, the amygdala responds to this, this stimulus by making pretty quick decisions about this is dangerous, this is safe, okay? If it decides this is safe, then it allows that information, whatever it is, feelings that are coming from inside of us or stimulus that's coming from outside of us, sights and sounds or tactile feelings. Um, if it decides that that's safe, then it allows that information to go up to the higher parts of our brain. So our hippocampus or the, also the elephant and the hippocampus helps us to learn and remember Okay, so she's the part of our brain that we really need if we're if our kids are in school or if we're trying to learn something new um, or if we're trying to recall information that we have learned previously. It also allows that information to go up to our prefrontal cortex and the prefrontal cortex or the wise old owl is the part of our brain that we use for language, reasoning, logic, impulse con control and problem solving. So when, our, when information goes up there, we're able to use that information for planning, for organizing, for making sense of the world um, and for controlling our impulses, right? So you might see a cookie sitting on the counter before dinner and your amygdala might sense that it smells so good and your feeling might be, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'd really like to eat that cookie right now. But that information travels up to your prefrontal cortex where your wise old owl will say, oh, help you control that impulse, right? And your Elsa the elephant will recall a time before where you had sugary treats before dinner and it didn't make you feel very good. And those two animals in your brain will help you to stop from eating the cookie before you eat dinner <laughs> so that you don't feel bad again, okay? Now, what happens if the guard dog decides that the information or the stimulus around it or whatever you're emotionally feeling inside isn't safe, um, is it sets off an alarm system in, uh, within us, right? And so in my book uh, or the analogy that I like to use is that the guard dog might start growling. And then if we don't attend to the growling of the guard dog and help soothe it and calm it down, then it will start barking. And when the guard dog starts barking, it wakes up Anthony the ape. And that's our fight, flight, or freeze response, okay? When that happens, it scares off the other animals. So the hippocampus, Elsa the elephant, and the wise old owl, your prefrontal cortex, they, they go and hide. So they're offline and our, we don't have access to that part of our brain. We're not as good of access to that part of our brain as we usually do. So when we're in that fight, flight, or freeze response, what happens is we often do and say things that we wouldn't normally do and say. So for instance, if you um, have children and maybe they're pushing your buttons, right? And you start feeling annoyed and irritated, your guard dog is gonna start growling. And if they continue to push your buttons and you haven't taken the time to tend to that feeling of irritation and start trying to calm yourself, calm your guard dog, your guard dog will start barking and Anthony the ape will show up <laughs> and then you might say or do something that you wouldn't normally say or do. So you might raise your voice, you might call them a name, you might slam a cupboard and scare people, right? So we don't, there's a saying, I don't know if you've heard it, uh, he went ape or he flipped his lid. And that's what's happening. That's where that saying comes from when we go into that fight, flight or freeze response, okay? Now, it sounds really easy to, to say, oh, well, I, you know, I can control this. But the problem is, is that we don't have a ton of control over Anthony the ape, he is, um, the emotion, he's in the, he's, he lives in the emotional seat of our brain, the limbic system. That's where the amygdala is located. And what that means is he's really connected to our emotions. And so he responds to our emotions and he responds to the external stimulus. And he's rather like a dumb puppy 
to be frank, he doesn't really understand the difference between what's actually dangerous and what's just us feeling upset or somebody pushing our buttons. And he responds in the exact same way. So whether the house is on fire or your child is whining, your amygdala will respond in the same way, setting off that same alarm system where you move into the fight or flight response and you, you lose access to the prefrontal cortex and your hippocampus. Um, and then you're just left with that fight, the fight <laughs> freeze or fight response. Um, so when that happens, there is no reasoning, right? And so if it's you who's, who's gone ape or your child or your partner or a coworker or a customer that you're dealing with, who has moved into that, that, um, that fight, flight, or freeze response, you can't reason with them, okay? So there's no point in trying to correct behavior if it's a child, reason with an adult, or prove a point, there's, you can't, or solve a problem. You just can't do it at that time because your brain is literally not online or their brain is literally not online to be able to process uh, language or process problem solving or process logic or reasoning, right? That's all out the window. So the best thing that you can do or to help yourself or to help somebody else is to simply try to calm the guard dog down. And we can do this um, in, in several ways. One very important thing is take a break from whatever you're doing because you cannot finish it. <laughs> At that time, right? You are going to make mistakes. You are not going to feel good about whatever the result is. So just take a break and try to tend to your own feelings. Um, the second thing we can do is when we're taking our break, we can use our essential oils to help us um, help our systems calm down. So when we take a break, what happens? What happens automatically is we're kind of starting to disengage, right? So the guard dog, it's almost like we're walking the guard dog away from the window, right? That they've been barking out the window at the mailman. We're, we're helping them move away from the window so they can't see the guard dog anymore. I mean, they can't see the postman anymore. Um, and just doing that helps calm the system just a bit. When you use your essential oils, um, and we'll talk more about this later, they get into your, your um, when you inhale essential oils, they go straight into your limbic system, that emotional seat of your brain. So they start working their magic to help start calming that guard dog as well, okay? And I'll give you a few more tips throughout this, throughout this talk tonight about how you can use your essential oils and the steps you can take to help calm your guard dog and get back um, to your balanced, grounded self. Now, I just, I like starting here because I think it's really important for us to remember that we can go move into that fight or flight from stress, right? We can move into that fight or flight from fear. We can move into that fight or flight from annoyance or irritation or frustration or sadness. So it's not just about, I move into fight or flight because I, I think somebody's trying to break into my house or I got into a car accident or, um, you know, any of those things. So just keep that in mind. And also that kids move into that, that a lot, right? Our kids move into that fight, flight or freeze response a lot, simply because the part of their brain, their prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed. So they, they, they are, they're more likely to be living in their amygdala in that limbic system of their brain. Um, and have higher emotional reactions than adults do. And that wise old adult that prefrontal cortex part of your brain doesn't develop fully until the age of 23. So all through <laughs> adolescence as well as early childhood, um, <laughs> we have a tendency to lean towards the uh, limbic reactions over the prefrontal cortex reactions, okay? so. Remember, the prefrontal cortex, logic, reasoning, impulse control. Not there until you're like 23. <laughs> and even still, hard to control as an adult, right? Okay. <laughs> so, um, also like to talk about the window of tolerance. 
Um, and this is, this is a really fun picture, um, but really all it's telling us is that we have this optimal functioning zone. That's when you're feeling grounded, you're feeling, um, you know, well rested, you've eaten well, you have this optimum functioning zone where you can show up as your best self and you can use all of your tools, all your coping abilities in that optimal functioning um, zone. When you're, what happens is when we start feeling stress, that optimum functioning zone starts closing, okay? So <laughs> for instance, um, let's say, you had a good night's sleep and you woke up and you're like, oh, I'm feeling so good. And you start moving around the house and doing your thing. And then um, you realize that you have a meeting an hour before work, right? You had forgotten about. So you have this stress all of a sudden. And I like to think about this stress as like the hay on the camel's back. You've heard that saying, right? The straw that broke the camel's back. So let's think about this, this as straw. Every bit of stress is a piece of straw that's landing on the camel's back, okay? So we have this window of tolerance and this is the, the camel with the empty back. <laughs> and then we wake up and we find out we're, we're already an hour behind schedule, even though we were feeling quite good. So now our window closes a little bit more and then our kids won't cooperate and they're not getting ready to go to daycare or to school in a timely manner. And so our window closes a bit more. And we finally get everybody out to the car and we can't find our keys. And so our, our window closes a bit more. And then we, we finally find our keys and we get the car started and we're driving along and we get stuck in traffic and we're not moving anywhere quickly, right? So our window closes a bit more. Now, this is all stress. However, because you had a large window of, of functioning, optimal, you know, your window of tolerance was quite large and you have some good coping skills, you're dealing with all this stress. You might feel frustrated, you might feel overwhelmed, but you're able to cope with it and still function. You haven't melted down and ended up in a puddle on the floor yet, okay? So as the day continues, <laughs> you get the kids to daycare, you get the other one to, to school, you're driving along and you're getting closer to work and you get to work and you park and you go to get out of the car and you spill your coffee all down your white shirt before you walk into this important meeting. So <laughs> more straw on the camel's back and your window of tolerance closes a little bit more, right? And as the day goes on, all these terrible, horrible things keep happening and your window of tolerance just continues closing more straw on the camel's back. And by the end of the day, your, you know, your partner's picked up the kids, everybody's at home and you get home, you walk in the door and you trip over somebody's shoe who didn't get their shoes onto the shoe rack. And at that point you have an absolute collapse and meltdown and you start screaming at everybody in your house about how lazy they are and how could they leave shoes at the door for you to trip over. Can't believe how disrespectful they are. And your family is looking at you like you're a bit crazy because it's just a shoe. And this happens almost every day. But this, for some reason today, right, was just, <laughs> you had a huge emotional reaction to. So for them, it seems out of the blue and crazy that you would be melting down like this over something so small as tripping over a shoe. But for you, it's the straw that broke the camel's back right? Because you had this lovely window of tolerance, but all day it was shrinking. And finally, at the end of it, you moved into your fight, flight, or freeze response. So I like to think, I like to go back to this, right? So I like to think of the window of tolerance as the area in which our guard dog is alerted, or maybe even growling. However, it's not barking yet, right? So our window of tolerance can, depending on who you are and what your history has been, um, what, your, what your brain is like. So if you have a brain difference, if you have um, anxiety, if you've experienced trauma, um, if you have a learning disability, all of those things affect the makeup of your guard dog. 
and also the makeup of your window of tolerance, how wide your window of tolerance is, right? So everybody's window of tolerance is different depending on how much coping ability they have, their capacity for coping with stress is. And that depends on your history and just what you, what coping skills you may or may not have. And as you know, so when, when I wake up, if I have a, a fairly big window of tolerance, then, and I've had a good night's sleep and I've been eating well, right? I've been dealing with my stress by doing self-care, then my will, window of tolerance will be quite large and I might be able to handle quite a bit of stress over throughout the day. However, if I have experienced trauma, my window might be closed a little bit to start with, might be just a bit smaller um, than, than if I hadn't experienced trauma, right? Or if I have a brain difference, right? Or if I'm not taking care of myself, or guess what? If there's a global pandemic, then your window of tolerance might be a little bit smaller than you're used to, right? <laughs> because we're all dealing with extra stress right now. So if you find that right now you're feeling uh, less able to deal with stress than you normally are, less able to deal with challenging behavior from your kids, um, less able to cope with difficult emotions or to cope with um, frustrations or stressors in your life, I want you to know that that's normal because your window of tolerance has shrunk because of the global pandemic, okay? It's normal for that to happen and it's happening to all of us. So you are not alone. I also want you to know this so that when you're looking at other people, uh, when you're looking at your family, at your friends, at your kids, that you recognize that their window of tolerance has also shrunk because of the global pandemic. All right, because of all the stuff that we're seeing in the news, because of stresses around, are we gonna get sick? Are we not gonna get sick? Are my friends healthy? Is everybody staying safe? I have to wear this mask. I have to sanitize my hands. I have to, you know, it's all mental load, right? That we're carrying with us. And that is shrinking our window of tolerance. So our ability to cope with extra, with more stress has, has shrunk, okay? So hopefully just knowing that will give you a little bit more compassion for yourself and a little bit more compassion for others that you're, that you're dealing with who may not be as kind or as patient or as tolerant as they might normally be. All right, so what can we do to open our window of tolerance <laughs> when we feel it closing, right? And as I said, if we can start tuning into our bodies and tuning into what's happening for us, we might be able to start recognizing when our guard dog is growling or is on high alert because our bodies might send us some signals that lets us know that our guard dog is, is activated, okay? And I, I just want to recognize that some people live with a guard, an activated guard dog all the time. So they might not feel the difference in their body until their guard dog is really heightened, really active really barking okay so and if that's if that's you just know that you can start recognizing when your guard dog is changing just like other people can start recognizing when their guard dog is activated right so what we want to do is just tune into our bodies because our bodies send us signals about um about how we're feeling Sometimes we're not connected to our bodies all that well. We spend a lot of time up here in the brain thinking about things. And often our body is sending us signals about how we're feeling. So we might tune into a stomach ache or a kink in our neck or a heart rate a little bit going a little bit fast or our cheeks flushing and us feeling hot. When that happens, those, those are all signals from our body that something's going on for us emotionally maybe. And then we can take action to help uh, alleviate those feelings. So some of the things that we can do, just basic things to help, help keep our window of tolerance open or help open it up a little bit more is self-care. 
So using frankincense daily is really helpful because frankincense is kind of, um, it helps move emotions out, clear off the cell receptors. So emotions are simply cells within our bodies and they, they molecules, they move through our body and our cells receive them. And then that gets processed in, in our brain and throughout our body. Emotions are felt throughout our body. What happens sometimes is those cell receptors, I, I do this because that's what it looks like <laughs> in the science books. A cell receptor looks like this, attached to the cell, which looks like a circle. <laughs> so, um, so when we use frankincense, what happens is that the cell receptor gets kind of cleared off. So sometimes we feel like we're kind of stuck in an emotion. And when we're feeling like we're stuck in something, then using frankincense can be really helpful to clear that out. However, I think that using frankincense on a daily basis is really helpful because it just helps clear out any residual stickiness on those cell receptors so that, <clears throat> so that we can kind of start our day fresh, right? Okay, sorry, I'm gonna take a sip of my drink here. Mm. All right, so yarrow palm is another wonderful one for self-care. And this yarrow palm is a really lovely way to help create safety within our systems. So if you can use it on your, your solar plexus, um, it helps create this sense of safety and this sense of, um, security within our own bodies that can be really powerful in helping us helping us calm that guard dog or keep the, the guard dog a bit calmer than normal. Grapefruit is also a wonderful one for us to use daily because grapefruit helps us uh, be in touch with our body and respond to our uh, what the signals are that our body is sending us. So those cues that I was talking about before, um, grapefruit is going to help us be more in tune with that. Okay. Um, sleep is a really big one. I don't know if you've ever been around a toddler, but <laughs> if you've been around a toddler who hasn't had a nap, you will know that sleep is very important for dealing with emotions and being able to deal with stress and being able to deal with frustration. Um, and that does not change throughout life. However, as adults, we just hide it a bit, a bit more, right? <laughs> so getting a good night's sleep, going to sleep at a reasonable hour, going to sleep at, at consistent bedtimes are all really helpful. And one of my favorite blends for sleep is um, a combination of cedarwood, vetiver, juniper berry, and wild orange. If you put equal parts of that into your diffuser, um, I, I bet you'll have a great sleep. <laughs> so give that a try tonight and let me know, okay? Um, some other things that we can do to help us with keeping our window of tolerance open is yoga. Yoga is a really wonderful um, practice that can help us practice in the moment, being present with our body, um, mindfulness that we can then take off the mat and practice in our in our throughout our day. Um, so some oils to help with that is uh, sandalwood. Sandalwood is a really lovely, um, rich oil that is going to help you feel grounded and more connected um, to yourself um, and, and more mindful. Vetiver, vetiver is amazing, amazing oil for grounding um, and for helping us kind of get out of that panicked, anxiety, um, fearful mind and into our bodies. Um, so vetiver is a great one for anybody who has anxious thoughts um, or repetitive thoughts. Use your vetiver, drop, place a drop in the palms of your hands and really get a good, good sniff of that and maybe put some on the soles of your feet. Um, that's going to help you get grounded. And again, grapefruit because I, I really love building that connection between mind and body um, because it can be so helpful in bringing awareness to to our feeling states and bringing awareness to what we need in that moment, okay? And the last thing that we can do for opening our window of tolerance is eating right. Um, supplements, the supplements, the LLV that doTERRA offers, so important and a probiotic. 
uh, I don't know if you know this, but over 90% of your serotonin, that's the feel good hormone, um, is made in your gut. So if you do not have good gut health, um, then often you find that your mood is, is more depressed um, and that you might have a harder time with thinking, you might have a harder time with processing thoughts, you might feel brain foggy, um, low energy, and may also um, <clears throat> find that your immune system is a bit, a bit off. So if you find that any of those things are happening to you on a regular basis, um, consider using a probiotic. Often when I start seeing clients for counseling, one of my first questions are, are you taking a probiotic? <laughs> because probiotics are so helpful for maintaining gut health and gut health is so important for emotional well-being. All right. Um, so you could try this uh, window of tolerance or just tolerance um, diffuser blend that I have here. Uh, patchouli, grapefruit and black spruce are all wonderful um, together in the diffuser. Patchouli is really going to ground us and help us um, help us feel more in our bodies. Grapefruit is going to help us respond to our bodily stuff and black spruce is it has quickly become one of my favorite oils for dealing with stress. It is just such a, a, a like an oil of stability. It just helps you feel strong and like you can handle just about anything. So I'm really have been enjoying it. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, um, I, I recommend it. <laughs> Get your hands on some black spruce. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So our how our brains also work, which I think is helpful is to know is that our brains establish pathways when we experience repeated emotional reactions. So for instance, um, we have this, you know, we have a stimulus. Um, so maybe, and I'm going to use a parenting scenario because that's what I know. And I work, I work a lot with parents. So it's something that comes quickly to my imagination when I'm looking for examples. Uh, but remember this applies to any relationship. Okay. So if for instance, your child is doing something that is irritating or frustrating or hurting your feelings, you will have this emotional reaction. And when you have that emotional reaction, then we often move into adding, adding thoughts to that emotional reaction. So we have an emotion, so maybe I feel irritated. And then my thought might be, I can't handle this, I'm gonna lose it. And then our behavior will be, I'll yell, I lose it, right? And when we go through that pathway, right? When we do the same steps over and over again, what happens is we develop this well-worn pathway in our brains that uh, we tend to go down uh, more often, faster, easier. Okay. Um, so our reactions become quicker and easier, like they, they just turn into more knee jerk reactions, right? We don't have to think about it. We're just doing the same, same reaction over and over again. And our actions, our reactions are really just those well-worn pathways. However, we can rewire our brain to help us become the parent or the partner or the person that we want to be. If we're having a, a, a reaction that we don't like, we can change it. Now, <laughs> one moment here. Uh, it does take time and effort to change these pathways because they are worn. Just like it would if it was this pathway that we're looking at on this PowerPoint, that is a well-worn pathway. Somebody has walked that path thousands of times. And if, if we are to get rid of that pathway and, and, and create a new pathway in that really long weeded grass, it is gonna take some work. And that, that old pathway is going to be visible and accessible for a pretty long time, right? So when I say that we can create new pathways, I want you to know it's possible, possible because our brains have this thing called neuroplasty, which means that we can create new pathways and we can prune out old pathways. We can get rid of them. However, it takes persistence, consistency, and time. All right. 
So when we're creating these new pathways, there's a few different steps we go through. One of the steps is we get to recognize that we're doing the same thing after we've done it. <laughs> so we create this awareness of, I don't wanna yell at my kid, right? And the first step is to start recognizing when you're yelling at your kid. So that happens after you've yelled, okay? Step two is to start recognizing when you're doing it. So in the middle of yelling at my child, I will say, oh gosh, here I go, I'm doing it again, right? Oh, I hit my head kind of hard there, sorry. Getting excited. <laughs> Step three will be, I will recognize it maybe before I step into it, okay? And so then I can start changing the path that I'm going down. That's when I can start changing the pathway and choosing a different option for maybe taking a break and settling myself before I talk to my child so I can avoid yelling. All right, is this making sense to everybody? If you have any questions, please, you know, please pop up and, and put them in the chat. I've got my Facebook Live up here and my, my Zoom up as well. So I will see any comments that are coming up and I haven't seen any questions coming up. I'm appreciating Jennifer for popping um, things into the comments here, the diffuser blends and some of the things that I've been sharing. And thank you, Jennifer, Black Spruce is on 10% off this month. I was wondering, was that this month or last month? I don't know, but I stockpiled because 10% off, that's a good deal. <laughs> so, all right. So how essential oils work with our brain is step one, when we inhale, um, it's the aromatic molecules enter into our nose and enter into our olfactory membranes, okay? The membrane processes those molecules, just like our, our bodies and our mind processes our emotional molecules. They're like the same thing, right? And they transmit the signals to parts of our brain, including our hippocampus. So that's that, the elephant, Elsa the elephant, and the amygdala, the guard dog in our limbic system, right? That's the parts of the brain that's in charge of the memory and our mood and our emotions. So then the next thing that happens is our body responds to the essential oil by triggering memories or invoking a feeling or releasing a natural chemical that helps us to relax or calm us or energize us. And amazingly, it works almost instantaneously. So honestly, like essential oils are one of the fastest things that I've found in my my history of doing therapy with, with couples and families and children that can help shift us and ground us and change our moods almost instantaneously. It's a miracle. Okay, so <laughs> the aromatic um, anchoring technique that I wanted to talk to you about is a simple way to allow you to change unwanted feelings or reactions in a matter of moments. So the essential oil becomes the cue to your brain to go down a new pathway, right? So we're, you know, we're talking about changing the pathway and we have these well-worn pathways. And I was talking about how you know, there's those three steps, right? First, you start recognizing after you've gone down the pathway again. And that always sucks because once you realize that you don't want to go down that pathway anymore, once you, you, you get down it after, you're like, oh, I did it again. Why can't I stop myself from doing this, right? And then the second step is to recognize it when you're in the midst of it. And the third step is to start recognizing before you step down that path. What, how the essential oils can help us is we can cue our brains with essential oils to help us choose another path. So we can make this process of changing our pathways in our brains faster, all right? Now, it still work <laughs> and it still takes time. It's not gonna happen overnight with one sniff of essential oil. It's not that kind of miracle. But it, it, it will make it easier and faster uh, of a process for you. So what you do, the way that it works, is you take your essential oil. And again, you can take any oil that you like. However, there's some oils that will 
also just enhance the benefits of using it because of the um, chemical makeup of that oil, because of the emotional benefits of that oil. So you may want to check out a few resources. PJ Hanks has an amazing book um, that talks about all the chemical components in our in in the essential oils that can really help you figure out which oils will chemically support your brain in doing what you want it to do. And the emotions book, um, essential, the, what's it called? Jennifer, can you put the names of those two books in the comments for us, please? The essential emotions book um, is the other one that's super helpful because it will tell you the benefits um, the emotional benefits of the oils. So you might be able to choose an essential oil that will um, benefit, like speak to the emotion that you're trying to work on. Okay. So what you're going to do is, is basically just pick up an essential oil. You're going to put a drop in the palm of your hand and you're going to rub your hands together, just like we did at the beginning of this session. And you're going to take some deep breaths and you're going to say an affirmation or help create thoughts or beliefs or a feeling that you want to have, okay? So as you're smelling that oil, maybe you're trying to stop complaining. Maybe that's the pathway in your brain that you wanna, you wanna work on. I don't wanna feel so down or sad or complaining about things. So maybe you're trying to create a gratitude um, right, so you choose an oil, um, and then you take your, take your, your deep breath, and then you're going to help yourself by creating a thankful moment, right, so you're going to think about something that you feel blessed to have in your life, and you're going to remember a time when you felt happy, or you remember a time when you felt that feeling that you were trying to that you're trying to create right now, because when we re remember things, what happens is we get that shot of dopamine that we're trying to create right now, and it helps our brain feel good. Okay, so just by remembering a time when you felt the way that you want to feel, felt happy, felt safe, felt secure, felt calm, felt grounded, whatever it is, it's going to help your brain remember what that feeling feels like and help create it again, okay? So you're just going to inhale your essential oil, say something positive, an affirmation or um, something kind, and then try to remember a time when you felt that way. And that's going to help you start creating this pathway. Now, this is, this is part of creating the pathway is doing that consistently, right? So as you practice that every day, what's going to happen is it's going to become an anchor for your mood, for your brain, a cue to your brain to go down that new pathway. So then those days that you're feeling unsafe or stressed or sad, you can go back to that same essential oil, you can take a whiff of it and your brain's gonna go, hey, I remember that smell. And when I smell that smell, I feel happy. And it's going to go down that pathway. Okay. So if you don't believe me, <laughs> I will have you pull out your cinnamon or your citrus bliss or your wild orange and smell that and tell me that it does not bring up a memory from your childhood. Right. So sensor, <laughs> these aromas can be really powerful for bringing back memories. And when we bring back a memory like that, what it does is it creates that emotional environment in, in our bodies again. So give, that, give this technique a try and let me know how it works for you. I'd love to hear um, your, your stories. You can always come back and pop them into the comments here. Okay, so one of the things that I created recently was um, these a card deck. Um, called Parenting Essentials. And in the card deck, I have one side of the card is the triggered, and it tells you what that means. So being triggered is an uncomfortable emotional response to a particular behavior, memory, or process. 
And then on the other side of the card, it tells you oil suggestions and a parenting tip. Now, again, parenting is my thing. It's my jam. It's kind of what I have, um, you know, been practicing in my, in my work and in my life. So it's where I go. However, these tips are not just for parents, okay? These tips are for relationships. So my audience is mostly parents, so I talk parenting, but if you're not a parent, that's okay. You can still use these cards because all the tips are relationship-based, okay? So, you know, you can get triggered by other people besides your children, right? Right. So <laughs> if you're feeling triggered, pull out your magnolia. Magnolia can help calm our nervous systems and help us tap into our self-compassion to calm ourselves down. And you can also use that black spruce I was talking about, which just helps us feel so grounded and return to a more balanced state. Um, and, you know, it's being triggered is, is really normal for both adults and children. And when we learn how to calm ourselves down and how to stay calm when we, when we feel ourselves being triggered, it's much easier to do when we can catch ourselves in that, uh, in that growling state, right? So you feel triggered, <laughs> what you're feeling is your guard dog growling, all right? And if you take, a if you take time then to deal with the grounding, um, to deal with the growling and help calm that guard dog down, then it's gonna be much easier than if you allow that triggered state to continue and for you to move into a full blow in fight, flight, or freeze response. That's when you move into that state, it's much harder to get back from, to get back to grounded from, okay? So um, triggered, when we're triggered, we often react without thinking and we travel down those well-worn pathways, those knee-jerk reactions. And this is where using our essential oils can help cue our brains to use our new pathways. And one of the diffuser blends you could try for this is um, black spruce, coriander, and cardamom. So the black spruce, again, is really uh, helpful for feeling stable um, and feeling like you can kind of bend. Because <laughs> often when we're triggered, we feel very rigid, don't we? Um, and then coriander and cardamom are really good for helping us uh, release anger and feel more um, connected because um, when we're feeling connected, we don't feel as triggered. Mm -hmm. All right. The other card I wanted to share with you is self-compassion because self-compassion is so helpful this time of year. So helpful um, <laughs> when we're in a global pandemic, so helpful when you're feeling a lot of stress or overwhelmed or other big emotions. So again, self-compassion is really just our ability to recognize that we're our own suffering. And when I say suffering, I mean you're feeling not okay. You're feeling out of balance. I don't mean like um, you're bleeding out. <laughs> And I don't mean that you're in a puddle on the floor. That might be suffering, but you don't have to go that far to be to recognize that you're you're having a hard time, right? And when you can recognize it, then you can tend to it with some loving kindness. So again, magnolia, it's one of my favorite, favorite oils because it really encourages us to find um, that place that offers compassion to ourselves, to others. Um, it helps us feel that connection, that interconnectedness of all human beings, of all beings, um, that and it helps us find our humanness, right? So magnolia is a beautiful um, oil to, to just help us feel loved by ourselves and by others and to help us pour that compassion onto other people as well. Pink pepper is another amazing oil to help us see how we compare ourselves to others and help us recognize our own self judgments and help us be more kind and loving to ourselves. So one of the, one of the 
I guess one of the hard things that we do to ourselves and the mean things that we do to ourselves is when we're having a hard time, we judge ourselves really harshly. And then we add on to the hard time by saying mean things to ourselves um, and really talking ourselves down instead of helping talking, like coach ourselves into a better place or giving ourselves some, some confidence um, that we can, we can get through this, right? Um, I saw this awesome quote the other day that, um, that if you're having a hard time, just remember that your, <laughs> your, what is it? Like your st statistics for making it through a hard time is 100%, right? You've made it through every hard time you've ever had because you're still here. You're here today watching this video, right? 100%. So if we could say things like that to ourselves, instead of I'm gonna lose it, I can't handle this, just think about how much uh, more confidence or strength that we would have for getting through that, that hard moment. Um, so something, this self-compassion um, is something that I like to teach all my clients because I think it's so helpful. Um, and it's a super great skill to teach kids and to help us be resilient through the ups and downs of life. Um, so the first step for self-compassion is really recognizing that you're hurting, right? And so just, just as simple as I, I'm, ha I'm having a hard time right now, I can't focus or I'm feeling overwhelmed, whatever it is, just recognizing what's going on for you. And again, right? Tuning in with your body, <laughs> recognizing what's going on for yourself is going to help in so many ways. When we can relate our hurting to the human nature, it helps us feel less alone, less isolated, and less um, like a freak, right? Because everybody has hard feelings. Everybody feels frustrated sometimes. Everybody feels sad sometimes. And um, especially right now through COVID, there's so many disappointments and so many, um, you, you know, loss. There's so much loss. And I don't mean, you know, we're losing people. I mean, we're losing freedoms. We're losing our ability to, um, to see people and to have that connection and physical touch that we so desperately need as human beings. So all of that is is lost, and so it's it's going to be um, it's going to be really helpful if we can recognize when we're hurting, and we can tend to that that hurting ourselves. So the third step of this is to say nice things to yourself, empathize with yourself, validate your own feelings. Um, the way that you would a child or a friend. So as I was saying, we often criticize ourselves harshly for feeling bad, for having negative feelings, for doing things that, um, that we think we could have done better at. Um, and for instance, if, if your best friend called you up and said, oh my God, I'm such a horrible mom. I just yelled at my kids and they left the house for school crying. I'm, I'm like, they should be taken away from me. I'm the worst mom ever. I can't, I just don't even know. I can't do this anymore. You're not going to be on the other end of that phone and say to your best friend, you know what? You are a sucky mom. I'm going to call the authorities and have your kids taken from you. That's what I think I'm going to do. <laughs> You're not gonna say that, right? Because that's your friend and she's hurting. So you're gonna say things like, oh my gosh, you're such a good mom and everybody has bad days and your kids are so loved and they know you love them. It'll be okay. You can fix this when they get home from school, right? You're gonna say kind things and you're gonna help build up her confidence so that she can face that challenge. So let's do that for ourselves, right? because we're listening. We're listening to everything we say inside our brains, all that critical talk that we say to ourselves. It all is affecting us. And so let's be a little bit more understanding and a little bit more compassionate to ourselves and say some nice things. So um, let's see. Here's my step-by-step -step for handling your big emotions. And it doesn't matter what emotion this is, you can use this step-by-step. 
um, for it. And I'll, I'll add this, um, <laughs> this graphic to the comments in the Facebook live so that you can, um, you can download it and save it for yourself. Okay, so first step, if you're having any kind of big emotion, if you're feeling sad, if you're feeling angry, if you're feeling frustrated or irritated, overwhelmed or stressed, call a timeout for yourself, right? As I said at the beginning of this um, class, when we're feeling emotionally overwhelmed, you cannot solve a problem. You can't focus, you can't learn, you can't plan, you can't communicate clearly. So just take a break, right? And then come back when you're calm after you've gone through the rest of the steps everything can wait a few minutes. All right, so then you're gonna get out your oils and you're gonna take, take some big breaths, <laughs> okay? Place your oil in the palm of your hands and cup it over your nose and mouth so that those oil molecules can then get into your limbic system. Some of my favorite blends for this are balance, console, or peace, but you can use any oil that works for you. Any and you know, lean towards the tree oils because they're gonna be grounding, all right? Okay, take a few deep breaths. Then I'm gonna I ask you to tune into your body. What is your body telling you? What are the clues about what you're feeling and what you need? What sensations are you feeling? What are, is your body telling you? Do you need rest? Do you need to cry? Do you need to go to the bathroom? Do you need to hydrate or eat? Do you just need to connect with a friend or scream or move or be in nature? What do you need? You can pray or journal, hit your pillow, <laughs> right? Just tap into your body and your body is going to tell you what, what you need. Okay, then the next step is to name your emotion. So when you name the emotion you're feeling, it connects with your intellectual brain. So you have two hemispheres of your brain. One's emotional, one's intellectual. And when you name your feeling, it connects those two sides, bringing balance to your nervous system and calming your system. So simply saying out loud or in your head, I feel so frustrated right now, is gonna help calm your system and is gonna help you feel better, okay? And I have to tell you, emotions usually only last about 90 seconds. So if you do this, these steps, it's going to take you about 90 seconds and that emotion is going to be gone. <laughs> All right. If you don't do this, <laughs> what's going to happen is you're going to try to stuff that emotion. You're going to try to avoid that emotion. And it is going to be with you until you let it go, until you let it process. All right. It only lasts about 90 seconds <laughs> and then it will be gone. All right. The other ones that you're trying to hold on to, you're trying to hold on to them. So they're going to stick with you longer. All right. So try these steps and see if you can just work it out of your system. All right. So the last thing is to say something kind to yourself. Right. So again, this is really hard for me, but I can handle it. I just need a break to calm down. Right. So you're just going to acknowledge that you're having a hard time, validate yourself. It's okay. It's okay. You're having a hard time. Everybody has a hard time sometimes and you can do it. You can get through this, right? And this is what you need because you listen to your body <laughs> because you know what you need. You need a break. You need to pray. You need to go get a drink of water, <laughs> right? You need to talk to a friend and then you do that, all right? If you take that minute and a half to do these steps and release that emotion, it's going to feel like a wave lapping at your feet, right? Sometimes what happens is those, those big emotions, we're, it's like we're standing on the beach and we're watching the wave come in, right? And sometimes we're like, I, I can't stand through this. That wave is gonna knock me over. I can feel it coming. And that fear of handling the emotion of being able to stand through the emotion is, is almost worse than the emotion itself, right? That emotion itself, as I said, will, will wash through you in about 90 seconds. But that fear of handling the emotion we can sit in that fear 
and we can hold on to that emotion for a really long time. And it can often be more intense and more scary than the emotion itself. So try, try this process, this step-by-step, -step, um, the next time that you're, you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling like you're sad or angry and see if, if this helps you process that emotion a bit. All right, so I hope you found tonight's class helpful. And as I said, I'm gonna drop that graphic into the comments um, as soon as I'm done here. So you can download that graphic for yourself and keep it on your phone, keep it somewhere handy so that you know what to do. Uh, if you have any questions at all about any of the oils or any of the processes that I talked about tonight, please just drop your question into the, um, the Facebook Live comment section and I'll get back to you. If you want to connect online, I love connecting with people and talking oils. So please find me. You can find me at Parenting Essentials with Sarah Joseph on Facebook, or I have lots of videos on Connect with Sarah Joseph on YouTube. And of course, I'm on Instagram at sarahjoseph.ca. <laughs> so you can check me out there. Love to connect with you. And I really um, look forward to reading your comments. So I am going to stop my sharing now and I'm going to stop the recording in just a second for those of you who are on the Facebook I mean on the zoom if you're not on the zoom and you want to come and chat with us uh, in in the zoom then I did drop the zoom link into the the comment section on Facebook so you can hop over to zoom to have a conversation with me after the recording is done um, or, um, yeah, just say goodbye. <laughs> we'll see you again sometime. Thank you for joining me tonight. I really appreciate you being here and I hope that you found this helpful. Mm -hmm.